Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the Methuselah star. The star that you see right here, that officially was known as the oldest star in the universe up until recent times. With the original prediction estimating its age at around 14 billion years old, surprisingly older than the potential age of the universe. All of which was based on the study back in 2013 that used the analysis using the famous HR diagram and back then estimated the age at 14.46 billion years old plus minus 310 million years. Which of course does contradict the predictions for the actual age of the universe which currently stands at about 13.76 billion years old. But as more and more studies started to come out in the last few years, the scientists realized that this estimate was well, most likely incorrect. This kind of made sense. With the most recent study using some of the more modern techniques to estimate the age, suggesting that the age of Methuselah or the star known as HD 140283 is roughly around 12 billion years old, which is significantly younger than the age of the universe. But I think here it's important to first understand how the age of stars is estimated and then to discuss what exactly was done differently in this particular paper and in some of the other recent papers. First of all, pretty much all of our understanding about how stars evolve and how they change from one star to another comes from this diagram right here. This is known as the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram or HR diagram for short. And this video from the Hubble telescope and from the European Space Agency sort of shows us how this diagram works. So the story starts in 1913. These two astronomers looking at the stars realize that they can actually put them on a kind of a graph depending on the color and the total luminosity or the total energy produced. And in this case we're looking at a typical global cluster. In this cluster if we were to try to classify these stars by luminosity and by their color we would actually sort of get an image that would look something like this. On the left here you see the luminosity from the dimmest to brightest, dimmest being on the bottom, and horizontally you're looking at the different colors or different temperatures of the stars. Coldest stars are here, hottest stars are on the left. And this is sort of true of anywhere you look in the universe. In every galaxy, every global cluster, and a lot of different stars around us will kind of form this diagram. Here's another really really cool representation of all of this from some of the recent releases from the Gaia telescope that looked at like 50,000 different stars in the vicinity of our own planet. And once again you kind of see the diagram forming right in front of our eyes. And what all of this tells us is that for the most part stars tend to evolve and tend to advance through their age in somewhat predictable patterns and we can usually use these patterns to estimate the age of the star by looking at where it's located on the diagram. And as the stars like our sun age, they generally move downwards along the diagram and then a little bit to the left. But depending on the mass and depending on what's inside the star, the actual motion across the diagram is going to be a little bit different for every star. Either way though, by using what we know about a lot of different stars already, and by combining their actual luminosity and their actual temperature, with the observations of other stars using this graph, the scientists can generally work out the age of a star pretty accurately. At least for the majority of stars out there, the majority of main sequence stars, typical stars similar to our sun or similar to some of our neighbors. But here's the thing though, this one here is one of the rare stars. This is what we refer to as the poor metal star. It's one of the population 2 stars that have existed for an extremely long time and most likely was created when there was almost nothing but hydrogen and helium in the universe. And because of this, over the years, a lot of scientists realized that it's very likely that the HR diagram analysis might not really apply to these particular stars as well, simply because they do happen to have slightly different mixing of materials on the inside, and because unlike the majority of the stars like our sun out there, they do have slightly different composition on the inside as well. Which is why some other models, such as the mixing length model, which usually applies to various Newtonian fluids, and which can also help us understand how things mix inside various stars, could give us a slightly more accurate prediction and slightly more accurate analysis of what goes on inside those stars. But first of all, some facts about the star that we know so far. It's around 200 light years away from us and this is based on some of the more accurate observations 
that use the fine guidance sensor on top of the Hubble telescope to track various stars and to estimate their precise distance by using the extremely accurate calculations of parallax. It also seems that overall the star seems to contain about 250 times less iron than our own sun, which is one of the reasons why it's called a metal poor star. But unlike other metal poor stars, this one also seems to contain a little bit of lithium, which already presents an interesting fact. It means that it seems to be already younger than some of the other metal poor stars discovered. It also means that it hasn't really evolved into its red giant stage just yet. And because some other elements were discovered here as well, it does suggest that this particular object is maybe not the oldest star after all. But the thing is, because this is what's known as the field star, it's out there completely by itself and doesn't really have any partners and is not a part of a global cluster, similar to the cluster right here, this just means that it's extremely difficult to try to really predict or estimate its actual age. For field star, the uncertainty is just too much usually because the distances are not entirely precise, but also because we don't really understand what happens inside some of those stars and how exactly some of them age. Most modern, very accurate calculations of ages of stars all came from calculations inside of some sort of a cluster or some other region where the age was estimated using a lot of different parameters. But in this case, for a field star like this one, it's extremely difficult to get precise detailed observations and get an accurate reading on its age. Nevertheless, once again, one of the recent papers decided to do just that by using some of the new methods, including the previously mentioned mixed new length model, mixed with some recent accurate observations from the Chara telescope that allowed the scientists to establish more precise distance measurements. And as mentioned previously, the measurements did suggest that the star is around 12 billion years old, with the HR diagram right here showing us exactly where it's probably located on the diagram and also suggesting that the total mass of the star is about 0.81 masses of the Sun. But more importantly, the study suggests that, well, it seems that, just as suspected, the materials inside these ancient stars mix a little bit differently from some of the other stars we usually find on the HR diagram. And what this implies is that a lot of these metal poor stars, a lot of these ancient stars, these population 2 stars, they seem to age differently from the stars similar to our own Sun. And this, of course, shouldn't really come as a surprise because, well, first of all, the metal poor stars are extremely rare, so putting them on this diagram is already a little bit tricky, mostly because this here is an observation of stars that are very typical, very similar to our own sun. And second of all, well, what this probably suggests is that just like there is a part for main sequence stars, for various types of giants, for various types of super giants, and for different types of white dwarfs, the scientists might need to start thinking about adding another part for ancient stars, for stars that are ultra metal poor population 2 stars. They might need to have their own place on the diagram and trying to figure this out might take quite a while because these stars are extremely rare. For example, when it comes to stars that are even more metal poor, so called ultra metal poor stars, as of today there are only 34 discovered. And trying to create a graph from 34 stars is going to be practically impossible right now. Making this involved over 100,000 stars. Which also sort of implies that currently we probably still do not really have a good idea about how old this particular star is. But because this star is no longer the oldest star, we now have two new contenders. We have this ultra metal poor star discovered in 2018 with a somewhat long name you see right here that's located about 2,000 light years away from us and seems to be about 13.53 billion years old. Although unlike the previous star, it also seems to contain about 10 million times less iron than our own sun, which means that it's a lot more metal poor, which of course also implies that it's much much older. It also doesn't seem to have any oxygen or nitrogen on the inside. It also seems to have an unseen companion or a small red dwarf that orbits around it every 34 days and thus represent one of the more interesting ancient stars out there. But the oldest star to date, with the most accurate estimates so far, is this object right here, simply known as SM0133. It's just a little bit older, at 13.6 billion years old, located at a whooping distance of about 6,000 light years away from us. But because it was a recently discovered star with some of the most thorough techniques used to analyze its age, the actual estimate of 13.6 billion years old seems to be more or less accurate. 
And also, just like the previous star, it also doesn't have any oxygen or nitrogen, but does seem to contain some other stuff like magnesium. But because that particular star is so far away, it's going to be extremely difficult to study anything about it. Which of course means that the Methuselah star right here is still going to be our go-to object when it comes to trying to understand how these ancient stars evolve, because it's about 30 times closer to us than the actual record holder. But anyway, so that's pretty much all I wanted to mention in this video. Looks like this is no longer the Methuselah star, which should not really come as a surprise because when the star was discovered to be older than the universe, well, that's basically when most scientists realize that there's something wrong with our calculations. But anyway, a lot of really interesting discoveries about these ancient stars, but I'm sure we'll discover so much more once we find more of them somewhere out there in the galaxy. But until we find more stars or until we discover something else incredible about them, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out all of the relevant studies in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.